Hello everyone, my name is Chip, how you doing? So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I got a big old box, and in it, secret lair. So we're going to do a box opening of that. During the week I did attempt to play a league, I was missing the Leona Narbada, the cat that came back. Love my cat. So I decided I was going to play a league with that. I would normally play over the weekend when I have some free time. Uh, but unfortunately it was the work Christmas party, so I had to spend some time with my bro from another mo. So time was a bit short and I thought, ah well I'll just do it after work. And as many of you do know, I work a night job where I do manual labour. So even though I thought I was doing okay, turns out I wasn't. In fact, I would say my performance was a little dead compared to how I normally go. Lifeless eyes. Black eyes like a doll's eyes. But just because it wasn't a perfect league doesn't mean there aren't some interesting bits in it, so we'll play you one game from that. I do feel it does get to show off a good balance of my misplays and some cool things the deck is capable of. I won't do a full deck tech as we're only doing one game, but I will link the deck list down in the description below. And because we are mixing things up a bit, I would love to hear your feedback on the video, so please leave comments if you enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like. And if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And let's get on to the Secret Lair opening. Now please excuse me, I haven't used my camera in a very long time, so I'm excited to see how I go with the focusing. So, as we can see, Secret Lair Drop Series, I uh, believe, let's see how I go with the focus. Oh, wrong direction, there we go. I believe that is the Phyrexian text. Um, now my first instinct would be that given it is this way facing when you get it, that the top text is meant to be read that way. However, going by just general Western way of writing titles, generally your top is a bit bigger than the bottom. It'll be interesting to see. So it's the Phyrexian Secret Lair. We know what cards should be in there. Hopefully they're all in there, and if not, well, that's why we're filming. So we've got the Adventures in Forgotten Realms. Pack. I didn't care much for the set, but some of you might be interested in what's inside. Oh, that's good. So... To save us all a lot of heartbreak, obviously they've had to put in these what is the list cards in the back of the boosters. Because I'm not sure if you've noticed, but a few times after the uh, set gets released, generally two weeks after a set gets released, everyone is always posting, did my LGS scam me? No, your LGS did not scam you. You have cards from the list. So I'm glad that they've been able to decide to put that in. So what do we have? We got a dog illusion token. This creature's power and toughness is equal to twice the number of cards in your hand. Okay, that's that's all right. What is it? It's um Super Duper Muka Muka from um Yu-Gi-Oh! One of the god cards. Uh the one Yugi had in the cartoon, I believe, actually. Basically had that, but it was a thousand power. So this is this is the magic equivalent of Super Duper Muka Muka, who has a real name, but is based off Muka Muka, which is another card. And I'm really showing my nerddom references here, aren't I? Hope you like them. <laughs> All right, let's turn these around and have a look. Ooh, the art card. That is gorgeous. I have no idea what that is. Oh, that's okay. That's that is a kobold. I see, so these are the actual Dungeons and Dragons card for a Cobalt. Wow, but let's look at that, that is glorious. You know, I'm I'm not really like an art foily type guy, but that's that's pretty primo. That's that's some good stuff. Alright. So starting off, we got the basic island. Ginny Windseer. Okay. So a four mana flying 3-3 three, three creature. 
when it enters, we can scry one, potentially more, depending on the dice roll. That's good. I actually really like this treatment. I saw it online, was not sold on it, but honestly, in person, I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up. Oh, yeah, it's a little bit better than their photos. It's just a nice flat color, and just the use of the background art has just enhanced the gorgeous artwork by Pedro Potier. Pedro Potier. Gorgeous drawing. I play modern, so I'll probably never play this card, but gorgeous nonetheless. All right. Compelled Duel. Oh yeah, target creature gets plus three, plus three, and must be blocked until, until end of turn if it's able to be. Okay. That's cool. Nice little combat trick. Underbark Basilisk. Two mana, one, two death toucher. You know what? Pretty reasonable. Pretty reasonable. Spare Dagger. Equip creature gets plus one, plus O, oh, and has whenever this creature attacks, you may sacrifice Spare Dagger. When you do, this creature deals one damage to any target. Okay, so maybe not Spare Dagger, but I've been thinking about this sort of effect with um, Batter Skull. Sometimes we just need to be able to get the hit in, but we can't, and we end up losing to burn damage. So being able to have a creature deal damage outside of combat to any target means that our batter skull can gain his life outside of it. So just from a taxes perspective, this sort of effect's pretty cool. We can also grab it off Urza's Saga. So again, maybe not this particular card, but this effect I think might be able to help us win some games especially against your burn and aggro decks as taxes players. Wandering Trabador, I believe is what that's trying to say. Four mana creature, four two at the beginning of your end step. If you had a land, enter the battlefield, you may venture into the dungeon. You know what? That's all right. If you've got like a commander deck that's built around the dungeon stuff, I don't really play standard, so I'm not sure how relevant that is, but that's a good effect if you want to venture into dungeons. Alrighty, Green Dragon, a flying 4-4 four four for 6 mana. Poison Breath, when Green Dragon enters the battlefield until end of turn, whenever a creature an opponent controls is dealt damage, destroy it. I see, so it's like death touch for everything. Oh wow, even like your burn spells and stuff. Okay, I could see that being like a commander sort of card. I'm not sure I'd play it, but that's that's a cool effect. Temple of the Dragon Queen. As it enters the battlefield, you may reveal a dragon card from your hand. Temple of the Dragon Queen enters the battlefield tapped. Unless you revealed a dragon card this way, or you control a dragon. Okay, yeah, so just the old Khans sort of mechanic where you get the effect, but it's better if you do this uh, with a dragon on the field or in your hand. So... You get to choose a color and it adds mana of any color. It comes in untapped if you've got a dragon in your hand or on the battlefield. So that's just pretty good, pretty good. Steadfast Paladin, a two mana, two, two lifelinker. This is not bad rate, not a bad rate. Bullet, is that a bullet, bullet. Sounds like the, the duck egg thing. Uh, four mana at the beginning of your end step. If a creature died this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on bullet. So morbid end step, plus one plus one counter. Okay, it's common, makes sense. Ah, we got flumph. Our rare is flumph. <laughs> when flumph is dealt damage, you and target opponent each draw a card. Okay, I mean, you know what? It's a white rare and as a white mage, I'm pretty happy with how that went. And then we get a foil great axe. Equip creature gets plus four plus O. Oh, equip is five, one mana. And it's a foil. I mean, it's it's very pretty if you like foils. I'm, again, not really an artsy guy. Not, not a big fan of the foils. But hey, it's not bent like a banana. So that's obviously a plus. And it's, it's a few months old being from the Dungeons and Dragons set. So the fact that it's not bent like a banana means either they've sealed it very well or maybe they fixed the foiling. But yeah, just basically ultra bad hammer time in the formats that I play. But yeah, 
Great. So that's the end of that. We got that gorgeous art card, didn't we? Just gorgeous. I can see why people would want to collect those. And now, for the secret layer itself. All right, let's uh, give this a good look, hey? So I don't know what this says, no idea. Absolutely no idea. I'm gonna keep trying to focus the camera as well again. I've never really done this before. All right. I like this, easy to open. Thank you for being a part of Secret Lair. Well, thank you, Wizards, for making it actually easy to purchase, unlike a lot of other products you may try and sell. All right. Oh, okay. This is... I can see this. I'm not sure the camera can pick it up just yet. Okay. So we've got... This is like proper Lord of the Rings-style stuff here. Look at that. That's lovely. It actually feels nice to hold on to. It's like a, a new wallet, I suppose, which maybe was what they're going for. They want you to feel like you're getting your money's worth. And I guess we just slide up. Yep, just slides out of this casing to reveal another embossed secret layer cover. Okay. This one's just a, a lid. Out it comes. Oh, and here are the Phyrexians. Look at that. Look at that. All right, wow. I have heard that the glue for these is a bit much, so we're going to give it a go. Oh. Bonus card. Another foil. Not a fan of foils, but it is a gorgeous land. What's that? It's a... Can't remember his name. It's the four mana Phyrexian card, Phyrexian Ravager. Sorry, I don't remember his name. He's cool. A fighting deck with him might be fun. But yeah. Not uh, not as straight as the foil from, uh, from our Adventures in Forgotten Realms pack, which is a bit disappointing. But you know, that's why I didn't get the foil for Exions. Let's see if we can get him out of this glue without breaking it. Got it. And yeah, so the card at the back was actually, maybe that's why it's bent. It was only held in by two pieces of cardboard like this. Might have actually only been held in by one. That's why it fell out. But so I think that's fine for all of that. I think all of that could have just been in there like that. And that would have been adequate packaging. All right. Let's get these Phyrexians out. Now, when I first started building Commander deck, I knew I wanted to build a Carador deck because the idea of Reanimator seemed really fun to me, especially in something like format. Yeah, I knew, I just knew Carador was going to be something that I wanted to play. And so I went, how am I going to build this? And I decided that I was going to build a deck with every Phyrexian in the Abzan colors, every Titan that was legal, uh, every primordial, basically all the cycles like that, and then slowly the decks evolved. Uh, it's still not very good. I deliberately took out every infinite win combo because um, in a casual sort of setting, I don't like the infinite win combos. So there's the Vorinclex. Perfect. Look at that. Hopefully everyone remembers what it does because ain't no one going to read that. I like the numbers though, the seven and the six on the numbers is quite beautifully represented. Yes, seven and six, it's great. Urablask, apparently the friendliest of the Fraxians. Doesn't much care if you're completed or not, just angry. Angry in general. Shouldered, the whispering one. I'm just doing this by memory, have no idea what the card actually says. This could say, I'm too late, I can't write this down. But yeah, lovely anyway. And this one should be Jingataxius. Look at that, we got all of them then. Yeah. Blue never been my favorite color, but 
Awfully glad that we managed to get the Jinga taxi. I've seen a few people not get what they wanted. I've seen a few people order the foil version, get the non-foil, or order the non-foil version and get the foil version. So I'm glad I got the one I ordered. And then yeah, this I think the treatment that they've done for the background of the white cards honestly stands out better than all the other colours. Just the more, more less off-white, I suppose would be the way you say that. The less off-white title type and then the slightly more off-white text box just really works beautifully for white cards and i mean honestly just a great legendary especially in commander but it's just good to see a white card on par with all the others and not needing a combination of other creatures to be good and yeah i'm really glad i got this one so it was actually a really good value which is why i got it and i i run a couple of commander decks and i want the praetors in all of them and so that's why i picked it up because it was cheaper than buying them individually. And I think, honestly, that's where I'm going to be with Secret Lairs. If it's cards I want and they're cheaper, then I can buy them as singles. Because I do believe if you do want to buy cards, you should buy singles. Um, that's probably where I'm going to go. But overall, it took a while to get here. But I'm very happy with the cards. I'm very happy with the treatment. And I hope you guys like this style of video. Showing off... A secret lair drop or a pack opening or something hopefully everything's in focus it's been a while since i've used this camera and i hope you've enjoyed it and let's get back into some games all right round two with the cat and we've won the die roll opponent reveals a loris let's keep let's go planes give her runes pass and it plays the polluted delta they crack it get themselves a blood crypt untapped runs out a ragavan and a mishra's bauble looking at our top card go to our turn they draw a card, we get to draw the card they looked at. Liquor Wisp. Let's play Ghost Quarter. Run out Thalia. Pass the turn there. Polluted Delta. One mana Mishra's Bauble. Certainly a lot more balanced when it costs one mana. They look at our top card and they get to draw next turn. No attacks from the Ragavan. Pass to us. What is our top card? Skyclave. Let's play Horizon Canopy. Run out the Skyclave. Take out the Ragavan. Go to combat. Swing in for two. Take it down to 15. Pass the turn there. They crack the Polluted Delta in the end step. Get a water watery grave tapped they do have the swamp and then they just pass okay another skyclave let's go to combat swing in for four take it down to 10 let's play field of ruin run out flicker wisp target our own planes opponent casts a dress down all right plane still returns opponent casts a bobble looks at our top card just running out of croxa okay and an Inquisition to take our Skyclave. Oh dear. Rough. All right. We can stonewall the Croxa using our Giver of Runes. They play a Bloodstained Mire. They crack it. Starting to make me think we might have something like an Arbiter. Oh, just a Ragavan? Okay. Dress down goes away. Go to our turn. What do we draw? A Field of Ruin. It's Crack Horizon Canopy to draw. Planes, not bad. Let's just play the Planes. Go to combat. Swing in the air for three. Opponent takes it down to six. Pass the turn there. Unholy Heat on the Flicker Wisp. Let's protect it. We can survive one Croxa hit. And it just swings in with the Croxa. Let's discard a Field of Ruin. Go down to nine. And they run out of Death Shadow and a Blood Crypt tapped. Okay. So what happens if we swing with everything? They take four and then we lose. So we're only swinging with the Flicker Wisp. So then we run out the Esper Sentinel, run out the Ghost Quarter, go to combat, swing in for three. Opponent takes it down to three, pass the turn there. Opponent swinging in with everything. We're going to take three from that. Croxa trigger. Let's go to blockers. Esper Sentinel there. Thalia in front of the Croxa. Skyclave in front of the Death Shadow. Let's not protect anything. Hey, got there. Opponent must have had one removal spell. <laughs> Played around it very well. All right. Wow. Barrington's in. Sanctifier's in. I think that'll do. Might be Wisp out here. Let's cut one eighth of vial. 
One Intrepid. Run it like that. Yeah, we're keeping this one. Gonna hurt our life total a bit, but we got all the hate pieces we want. Scalding Tarn from our opponent. Crack it immediately. Blood Crypt, untapped. Dragon's Rage Channeler, okay. Into a bauble. Ditching an Inquisition. Makes me think they might have another one. Looks at our top card. All right. Go to our turn. They draw off their bauble. We get a path. Okay, that's not bad. Horizon Canopy. Let's run out Esper Sentinel. We lose a life. Pass the turn there. Polluted Delta. They crack it. Get a Watery Grave. Untapped. Just a Croxer. I actually think it's Path to Exile here. We have so much more removal in the deck. And Path conflicts with our Thalia as well. All right, well, they got a swing in for three, so we're going to take it. And then this Sanctifier is going to come down and ruin their day, getting rid of the Croxer and the Inquisition. Backup Arbiter's nice. So let's run out Sanctifier. Go to combat. Swing in for one. Take it down to 13. Pass the turn there. Swamp from our opponent. Opponent just passes after a long think. Let's play Ghost Quarter. Let's run out Thalia here. And I genuinely think attacking is the wrong thing to do because they've got the blue. Maybe they're randomly running Snapcaster. Probably not, but they could be. Dress down. They let us draw. Another Sentinel. Okay, not bad. So if they knew they were going to do that, maybe they should have done that in response to the Thalia, then they wouldn't have let us draw. Steam Vents. Untapped. Engineered Explosives for two. Okay. Don't think they need to dress down for that. So maybe they just drew it. I don't know. Well, they pass to us. Backup Sanctifier is pretty nice. So let's play out the Ghost Quarter. Run out of Leon and Arbiter. See what our opponent's going to do. Nothing. Let's go to combat. Swing in for four. So now they pop the EE. We're going to take them off red. Pass the turn there. Opponent swings in for one. We're just going to take it. Passes to us. Planes is good. So now let's run out Esper Sentinel. And I think we go for another Sanctifier here. So now even if they have a counter for it, we're going to draw two. Yep, it's what I wanted. I mean, I would have liked it to resolve, but it's good enough. We get to draw two. Eighth of Isle, not bad. Give of Runes is pretty good. Let's go to combat. Swing in for one. Would have loved a ghost quarter there. Pass the turn. Polluted Delta. They crack it. This is them getting their red. Steam Vents. Untapped. Down to seven. Another Dragon's Rage Channeler. Yeah, hitting us for three. So we could be dead next turn. Ooh, Death Shadow. Probably dead next turn. Go to our turn. Path to Exile. We're priced into pathing the Death Shadow. No, we're priced into pathing one of the Dragon's Rage Channelers. Weesh, that's painful. Let's run out an Arbiter. And that kills us. Scoop it up. Couldn't run out the Arbiter there. Yep, shouldn't have run out the Arbiter. We were going to hit the planes, so we would have been fine. Silly, silly me. All right, let's run it back. Let's not punt this time. All right, let's go first. Let's keep this hand. Let's go planes, give of runes, pass. Opponent plays a polluted Delta, cracks it immediately. Blood Crypt, untapped. Ooh, Inquisition. Damn, probably Arbiter going away. Thalia, okay. They might have two pieces of removal for the Arbiter next turn then. I'll make them show them. Planes, Arbiter. Pass the turn there. Watery Grave, untapped. Did tap, but passed back. Let's play Horizon Canopy. Go to combat, swing in for two. Take it down to 13, pass the turn there. Mishra's Bauble, Steam Vents, tapped. Looks at our top card, passes to us. Let's go to combat. Swing in for two. They take it. Let's run out the Aether Vial. Oh, that draws out a Drown in the Lock. Interesting. So we could just run out an Intrepid now. Gonna wait. Pass the turn. Polluted Delta. They crack it. Didn't pay the two. <laughs> Got him. Opponent just passes. Path to Exile. Pretty good. Let's go to combat. Swing in for two. They take it down to eight. We're gonna pass. Dress down. Suppose we give the Arbiter Pro Red. Loses protection. Okay. Dress down's really good. Engineered Explosives on one. Okay. And a Croxer, sure. Now Dress Down goes away. Let's play a Plains Skyclave. Let's take out the Croxer. We could chip in for one here. Could be relevant. Get in, pass the turn. Opponent is down to seven. Opponent plays a Bauble, cracks the Bauble. Looking at their own top card. They're wondering if they're going to fetch. Terminate on the Skyclave. Okay. Get themselves a 2-2. Two -two. Well, we go to our turn. Let's run out Skyclave. Take out the Engineered Explosives. Let's pay a life. Run out Aether Vial. Pass the turn there. They play a Swamp. Just getting Loris to hand and passing. Go to our turn. Aether Vial ticking up. Burnt and Forge Tender. Let's just pass the turn. Playing and cracking a Scalding Tarn. Casting a Loris. It's for Dress Down. It is for Dress Down. Okay. Let's cast Path to Exile on Loris. Let's activate Aether Vial. Burnt and into play. Go to our turn with the Dress Down on the field. Aether Vial up to two. Planes. Let's just pass the turn there. Opponent is casting Unholy Heat on the Giver of Runes. Let's try and give Skyclave Pro Red. And then, yeah, let's sacrifice, prevent all damage from the Unholy Heat. Okay, now an opponent's just drowning the locking. Sure. Yeah, sure. 
Unholy Heat deals no damage to the target that doesn't exist. Polluted Delta. They crack it down to five. It's a Blood Crypt. Tapped. Passing to us. Aether Vial activate. Intrepid Adversary. Pay twice. Okay. Aether Vial up to three. Esper Sentinel. Let's crack the Horizon Canopy to draw. Thalia. Not bad. Let's run out Esper Sentinel. Run out Thalia. And opponent scoops it up there. Very nice. All right. Got their Arbiter put the lot of work in that game. So very happy with that. All right, well, that was the game with Leona Narbada versus Grixis Death Shadow. Now, obviously, there were a few uh, hiccups there. I think we could have won the game about two turns earlier had we played more optimally, and maybe that's why the league went poorly. I was not prepared to be running the cat that day. As I said, got a bit busy with the work Christmas party and uh, didn't have time to adequately prepare for a video. And unfortunately, unlike some people, I can't just pick up magic and play it I do need to prepare and practice so hopefully for the next video I've got time to do that and until next time everybody have fun